years in the making, this bird robot is unlike anything you've ever seen before. It has feet like a peregrine falcon which allow it to perch and grab objects just like a bird. This robot is called Snag which is short for Stereotype Nature Inspired Aerial Grasper but it has no wings, just rotors. So let's get right into it and understand how it works. The drone weighs 680 grams and is as big as a real peregrine falcon. Its legs can independently move and start to collapse and fold to grasp an object or a branch just like a real bird. In place of bones, it has 3D printed structure that is rigid. It has motors and fishing line as stand-in for muscles and tendons which transmit different forces. Each leg has its own motor for moving it back and forth and another to handle grasping. Most of the structure on this robot is 3D printed with a lot of the mechanisms printed in place and that allows a whole foot segment and a whole leg segment to be printed out in one print and right off the printer it has all the joints built in with all the different components moving together. This allowed the engineers to rapidly test out different mechanisms to see which ones really work well together. The word stereotype in snag is used because its design was inspired by birds that engineers have been studying for years they observe that no matter the surface that birds are landing on, they carry out the same behaviors. They let the feet handle the variability and complexity of the surface that they are landing on. Engineers tested different toe arrangements of peregrines and parrotlets to see if one was better suited to perching than the other. The robot, however, performed equally well with both the arrangements. And that indicated that neither toe layout was more beneficial for perching than the other. Because of its unique design, this robot would be a game changer for environmental monitoring, search and rescue missions and studying bird habitats in more detail. Currently, these habitats are mostly observed by satellites which give an overall view of the environment but do not give accurate localized information. The drones that help fill this gap right now rely on rotors to keep them in the air but they can only do that for half an hour before needing a recharge and having to come back down again. This makes information in such areas inaccessible when needed the most. As there is no powered motor in snags, toes and legs, it can perch without using much energy, can provide new ways of making measurements and gathering data from such environments. So this is how snag works. When one leg makes contact with a branch, it starts to collapse, folding like when you bend your knee. This impact initiates a balancing process and causes a tendon in the leg to lengthen, pulling wires that are in each toe's underside. By design, leg collapse is directly proportional to the tension gathered in the tendon. So the more the leg collapses, more the tension gathers in the tendon. Until a quick release mechanism triggers a spring to pull the tendons even tighter. This step drastically increases the grasp force. The claws and the toe pads are made from deformable rubber covered with grip tape and help snag hold it tight. After landing, an accelerometer in snag's right foot checks the robot's balance and motors in the hips correct its posture if necessary. Meanwhile, a spring on the base of the robot absorbs the force of the landing transferring it back to the robot's feet for an even tighter grasp. So the energy of the impact with the branch is converted to grasping energy in 50 milliseconds and proves how well designed this robot is. This energy is there as the robot is flying and when it is approaching a branch to perch on, it has kinetic energy. This means that unlike a helicopter landing, this is more of a controlled collision. So if this energy isn't taken care of, it could severely damage the robot. As Snag has legs similar to a falcon, engineers also tested its ability to capture prey. In these tests, engineers chucked objects at the legs which were captured similar to how a peregrine falcon might attack other birds from above. As the objects make contact with the feet, the kinetic energy of that impact is converted and used for clamping its claws. Unlike a real falcon which takes off by flapping its wings and shoving with its powerful feet to get off the ground, 
Snag relies on its rotors to generate lift and lift it up in the air. To release the grip, another motor decreases the tension in the tendon. Because there are elastic bands on the tops of the toes, the digits automatically curl back to the open position once this tension is released, allowing Snag to fly away. We've talked about what Snag can do and how it works, but how difficult is it to bring a robot like this to reality? In a lab, everything can be controlled, but out in the real world, testing a robot can be very expensive. The same branch that the robot landed on yesterday could today be wet, or some branches have other branches coming off of them, a scenario which is very hard to replicate in a lab. Snag was initially tested in a lab where a rail system was set up that launched it at natural and synthetic purges measuring its performance for orientation, impact, and speed. There's a popular saying that goes, hardware is hard, and that proved true for these tests, as it took over 20 iterations to perfect the design of the legs. This robot was further tested out in the forests of Oregon, USA, where variability cannot be controlled, and its design was refined further, and it was found to perform really well in such environments too. The testing was done by a human controlling the robot, but in the future, engineers hope that with the help of an AI, they can help this robot orient, fly, and perch without needing a human being controlling the robot. This is of course easier said than done because AI learns iteratively. It is easier to train a software-only AI as it will never have to deal with the real-world variability. Therefore, for a hardware AI, simulations alone can never perfectly train it, or it has to be iteratively trained in the real world. So sure, an AI can learn in the real world, but as it is learning, it can damage the hardware, and time can be wasted waiting for the parts to be printed and calibrated again. And this makes the learning process very slow compared to a software-only AI. Therefore, this ambition could take even longer for engineers to perfect than the current design, which already took more than six years. However, if and when this work is complete, Snag could be like a perched helper, observing, monitoring wildfires, studying natural rainforests, and helping us save our planet. Thanks for listening. Catch ya.